I'm going to take off before my machine collapses, uh, crashes because of the the memory intensity of filming these. These come out five, six gigabytes a pop, so I got to keep knowing what's going on under the hood um, of these films. Bear with me. Uh, so this should be lecture 17 on um, what are the dyads that go into the city? What were the dyads that came out of the city, largely by urban people who sought refuge up in the upstate, the Catskills? I have almost two-thirds of my friends and associates, educated people, just head out of the city. Uh, the city was very empty. Um, what caused this in the moment of COVID? What was actually... Um, scary about this? What is the relative function of eros, agape, thanatos, the death fear, the death impulse, the death um, acceptance, COVID. Um, I remember 1,200 people dying a night in the New York area, the th hearing ambulances constantly in the month of April. It was daunting. I wasn't really scared. But then um, that's the thanatic aspect. And then this aspect of thumos or courage. Why did these... Uh, I had a number of people who, as couples with families, um, gay couples, straight couples, cisgender couples, head out of the city together. Many of those people did not return together. <laughs> what were the impulses... Um, the pregnancy rate out of COVID, unlike momentary blackouts and so forth, was relatively low compared to what one would expect about dyadic bubble um, cisgender couples going into the woods and being alone, um, having the luxury of... of um, broadcasting their Zoom lectures to other people, seeing dozens of faces across um, certain Zoom and, and uh, Microsoft Teams and the Google platform, seeing these faces just as postage stamp faces like you see of me now. Um, synchronous, largely, not so much asynchronous. You could go on YouTube and learn new things. Um, I myself, as a professor educator, could continue my work um, many other people went on unemployment, um, the aid, and largely the dole. How was this made? Was this mostly printed money? Um, quick answer to that was yes. Um, what are the repercussions? Why do we see inflation right now in apartment prices, travel, used car, uh, not used cars, uh, cars in general, food is going up. Um, so what are the reactions? And did people actually return like Thoreau to Walden and enjoy themselves together in the, the woods? On the beaches, a couple friends of mine went. In the desert of the Southwest, a couple friends of mine did. Um, did they enjoy each other or was, as we saw this, growth and an acceptance of larger sort of societal contrived narratives like we saw out of depression and World War II, which were conjoined events. Um, and certainly the libertarianism of the 20s was also a conjoined event out of the cataclysm of World War I and the Spanish flu. Um, 20th century seems to be these spasms of events, and certainly out of that was the Cold War. And um, let's just posit this, that both are all three, the Korean War in America, the Vietnam War in America, the um, Gulf War at the edge. Um, as we said, the event of 9-1-1 sort of capped off the American um, American uh, century, 2000 were these these were definitely uh, monetary fiscal policy exercises to inject um, uh, uh, industrial capital back into manufacturing of war material 
Um, they were acts of colonialism, um, kind of spuriously arose out of misinformation, the weapons of mass destruction, the Gulf of Tonkin, um, the shadowy things behind Pearl Harbor, uh, the Korean War, um, know that, I lived and worked in Korea, um, know that sort of intimately just what the first proxy war created in Korea against the Korean people, why that country is still divided, what were the dividends from that war, um, which are still in question. And above all, let's just talk about this, the effect of wars as a rite of passage in the formation of the dyad. We looked at um, film noir in the past class as a uh, type of witnessing, wonderful, textural, critically adept uh, witnessing in simple stories, negative stories, about a non-acceptance of the dividends of acquiescence. Um, I'm teaching this through Stony Brook, uh, Long Island, famous Long Island University, uh, big research university, surrounded by the fruits of the 40s and 50s suburban living, the man in the gray flannel suit coming back from the war. Uh, Levittown is ironically and comically placed as the apogee of um, the dividends from four returning soldiers, four women returning from the factories, now obedient, uh, Betty Friedan, Simone de Beauvoir and Betty Friedan's wonderful second wave feminist tracks come out of that non-acceptance of that tradition. Um, there's a great novel turned into a movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, kind of ironically returned from Titanic. Uh, Revolutionary Road, uh, the effect of this contract, post-war contract, suburbanization on a dyad, on a couple, on a couple accepting this prisoner's dilemma and how they get out of it, it does not end well. Um, and if this thing is played over and over again, let's uh, counterpoise the beatniks against the hippies or contra the hippies, the beatniks um, had a general countercultural rejection of the, let's just call it the Levittown dividends, um, cisgender Levittown dividends. Uh, they wanted to live in cities, they wanted to write poetries, they wanted to drink in bars, White Horse Tavern, they wanted to accept the gay lifestyle, they wanted to, in a sense, maybe replicate the, the sort of liberty notions of the 20s before the de-agricultural, de-agrarian sensibilities of the Great Depression. I mentioned before my grandfather lost his farm and hardware store in rural Wisconsin, went to the factory to, to weld submarine engines and thus successfully made it with his skill sets of welding into the industrial process. Um, I don't quite know if he accepted his own um, Levittown dividends or his film noir dividends coming out. He never fought in World War II, but I certainly had certain uncles who did fight, great uncles, and one who would talk about his war stories in the Pacific and a number of them who would not. Um, witnessing uh, the great, great, great literature of the Vietnam War era by both sides Americans and Vietnamese is uh, amazing uh, works of literature. I'll get back to this thing, categories of social behavior. Are we selfish? Do we cooperate? Are we spiteful when we are selfish or cooperative? Or are we altruistic? Um, even altruism has an ulterior motive uh, often. Um, moving further, um, here are the games you enter into if you're playing against your parents, your friends, your lover, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your spouse. Stag hunt. Um, 
buy stability. Do you focus on a larger project, such as in Revolutionary Road, raising kids, having a Levittown, suburban New York household, except women accepting their role as unseen economy within houses to which second generation, no, notably Be uh, Betty Friedan, talks about? Or do you suddenly break for other dividends? Hence the stag, you hunt a stag or suddenly a bunny appears and you want one of you goes after the bunny upsetting the larger stag hunt. Um, a stability of agenda requires that all um, individuals maintain um, a focus on um, the game, the larger gains, the suspended gratification of gains. Often this breaks down um, when there is deception. Um, one perceives a Ponzi scheme within this. Um, the right is not accepted. The harmony game, uh, which is basically, all of these are iterations of the prisoner's dilemma, uh, separating two people by the man uh, might be the system, the state, the government, the markets, the, the neoliberal economy, whoever, some authority, pervasive authority with real um, impact separates prisoners, lower left. You have choices to defect against each other, uh, cooperate with each other as an intuition, uh, thus getting less of a punishment, or mutually defect, which means is the worst of all. You're both culpable of an attempt to further your selfish agenda. You defect against the partner. Um, again, we're framing this in terms of war, peace, economies, implicit narratives, gender, race, class. As we saw in the film noir in They Drive By Night, this was a class-based acceptance, non-acceptance of the prisoner's dilemma. Um, let's go to the snowdrift game, lower right, coexistence. You come up to a snowdrift facing your other, your spouse, your girlfriend, boyfriend, your parents, your friends, your siblings, and say, with pure visibility, hey, let's get out and plow this snowdrift so we can get on with life. Um, it becomes a game of coexistence in that the other person is like, no, you do it. I want to stay warm in the car. I want to be here. You get rid of that snowdrift. So unlike the stag hunt where the game in operation is ended, the prisoner's dilemma that you go off to prison, there's an element of time and pure information. You see each other coexisting. You say, let's, let's take care of this together. Harmony game is interesting, upper right. Um, cooperation. Uh, I have a number of Sapolsky lectures on YouTube, which I want to assign for you. Dealing with this notion of not just the prisoner's dilemma, if the so-called Mexican standoff is the reality in um, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, 90s, when the, the Cold War was seemingly over, I contend it's not, um, the acceptance of a neoliberal economy as still a, co a colonizing colonial force, uh, the notion of slavery turning into wage slavery, um, not chattel slavery, although there supposedly are more chattel slaves on earth. Uh, unpaid labor than there ever was in terms of pure numbers, um, uh, wage slavery, that we enter into this notion of the harmony game, um, which is, as Sapolsky said, is basically the forgiving tit for tat. Um, all things exist in time. There's no frozen relationship as the prisoner's dilemma um, sort of um, alludes to. Um, Snowdrift game, once you clear the the drift, you're on, there's a new game. Uh, stag hunt, once someone, either team kills the stag or one breaks for the bunny, it's over, the game over. This harmony game continues, the game of cooperation. Basically, it's this. It's the vampire bet. 
vampire bats go out at night. They, um, they suck their blood. They go back to the caves where... I guess it's only the female vampire bats. Uh, I'm not sure on that one. But anyway, it's game theory. Um, the returning female vampire, vampire bats are supposed to give blood to the their neighbor's children. Uh, and um, as a kind of a distributional socialist aspect of of being success, successful with their dividends, they give it to their children first and then they give it to their neighbors. Um, there are tests and cases where scientists have, you know, uh, um, put, increased the, the, the mouths of certain vampire bats and the, the adjoining female vampire bats. It could be both genders, I'm not sure. Um, sort of mistrust that person that they haven't given their dividends and thus punish them. Harmony game is a uh, forgiving tit for tat. Um, you do something, you get back something. You do something, you get back a great chain of being. And Sapolsky said this runs in the endocrinology of a lot of, of species on Earth. But when there is a mistake, like the vampire bat perceiving that that returning bat did not fill up the the stomach of the starving children around, um, she is punished. Um, the tit for tat is like tit tat tit tat tit tat. The um, on into infinity. Time plays an important element, but when there is a mistake, mistake, and you perceive that you're suckered, um, the the entity, and it's according to Sapolsky, it's found into a lot of aspects of nature, you forgive. You forgive once, you forgive twice, just to keep the volley, the game going. And these four aspects of the dyad, what makes cities, what makes us relate to strangers, um, certainly in the job place in academia and making artificial communities such as the corporation, the, the academic um, academic uh, campus have elements of all four stag hunt game is probably the by stability is probably <coughs> foremost in that um, they wish it to be a well lube machine the harmony game snow drift game everyone grab an oar and start rowing or a shovel and start getting rid of the snow um, and all of this collapses into a static prisoner's dilemma when one or both defect against the system. Um, we saw in American film noir the prisoner's dilemma worked out again and again and again and again um, as a system between cisgender men and women in their ability or inability to accept the dividends of, let's call it Levittown again, the suburban white, suburban cisgender, 2.5 children, their idea of replication, which was rejected by both the beatniks in the moment as counterculture and the hippies as the children of that generation emerging and sent off to Vietnam and, and or protesting it or going to Canada before they're sent off to war. Cities in war, we saw that in The Third Man, of a devastated Vienna, beautiful city, crushed to rubble, um, and the um, notion of Harry Reams, Orson Welles, as the psychotic, um, uh, in the stag hunt game, the psychotic um, person who moves through the city uh, in an amoral manner, not caring about how this impacts children. Moving on, um, altruism, mutual benefit, spite, parasitism, parasitism um, the bats. Uh, the parasites. Um, there's in Harari. There's this notion that primitive religions or the foundation of religion is as an imaginary world, as a cosmic system, responds less to the deep mysteries of death and sex and agape and thumos and you know all those. What we were lacking during COVID was a type of thumos or courage but more of a system to suss out the freeloaders. 
to suss out the parasites. Um, if they did not know these um, unspoken codes, if they did not learn it, they were not, they were simply living on the system. Um, game theory is immensely interesting in forming any organization, certainly cities, and certainly cities after COVID, which were kind of now, after the Minneapolis riots, were kind of now just unpacking and trying to understand what happened, what's happening to prices of um, going up, what is this inflation, which might be a factor of overprinting money for relief and so forth. Um, might probably uh, manipulation. Okay, moving further, uh, we covered this with vampire bats and bunny hunts and prisoners in two cells and snow drifts and all these colorful metaphors. Uh, um, con context of just your story, modernist life choose choices in time and space. Kind of after Giddens, after Heidegger, Dasein, look at these, uh, Dasein and place. Uh, Deray of daily life, you get down to individual space for product, daily time space routines, time geographies. Um, uh, Gregory, I think, was this for formulation out of this from Heidegger's sense of Dasein. Uh, space and place, local history, culture, and tradition, but the center one is interesting. Biography and time and space identity. Could happen in a city, could happen in an anonymous city, could happen in... I teach design, I teach UX, UI, uh, design, scenography, all of these things, and we're dealing with simulated times and spaces to help you talk about your own analog position in your own space with its own set of games. I contend that drama, the Greeks, Shakespeare above all, are kind of a practice run of you looking at um, game theory structures. Uh, certainly Macbeth, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. It's kind of a prisoner's dilemma, but also a snowdrift game between uh, husband and wife going on. Biography and time and space identity. Moving along before I get throttled. Finding focus, peak and end. We only understand the end because we remember the peaks. Um, a lot of the pain, uh, this is used, a lot of the pain in pregnancy, a lot of the pain in wars, all these other rites are remembered at the end because we remembered peaks within it. Hopefully peaks of positive um, relationships, positive um, influences, endings, death, um, eros, agape, friendships, um, acts of courage, thumos, um, perhaps the countercultural acts were actually acts of courage as we see within um, the film noir by both the femme fatale and the, the flaneur detective hero. There are acts of courage even though they want to be resolutely um, amoral. Um, interesting. Um, here's how Prop and Todorov worked out the, the semiotic square in terms of taking relationships to go into these contracts, the film noir contract, the Levittown contract, the marching off to Vietnam or the Gulf War, your contract with um, institutions of higher learning colleges, certainly the contract with um, corporations in a neoliberal economy. There's a contract, a call to contract, there's a competence which you're tested, a right, there's a, a performance, a decisive test, are you good at your job, are you this, is it a good marriage, is it, um, do you have a, a reciprocal relationship with your parents, and the sanction, which we're often missing in this internet world, um, in this world without the analog, we are missing the sanction, um, the glorifying test. Uh, the the ceremonies, the graduation ceremonies, the plays, the nights in the bars with friends. Um, we are missing the analog feature of the sanctions. Um, interesting layout. I don't know if I'm going to get throttled. Almost. Um, 
representation of space. Analog, it's primitive, cosmological, it's ancient, the Greeks, the Persians. Moving into um, the notion of slavery, chattel slavery within this are interesting. Um, Roman cosmology often let the, the slaves buy their freedom through work. Interesting when we consider our credit society. Um, but then what during the arising of Christianity in Europe, which ended the blood sport games in the Colosseum, added this notion of brotherhood, but often turned, um, it was no less a pro oppressive system, um, turned space into symbolic. In a largely illiterate society, you could express um, the, the pain of a hell after in an afterlife, the use of afterlife in a feudal system. We see the rising of a political city and a merchant city, mer uh, mercantile city. The urban form, feudal um, Renaissance Italy developed the mercantile city, Florence, which we see the dominant um, uh, way of rendering that in perspectival, the emergence of perspective in Florence. We emerge at the logical city, the capitalist city, the industrialist city, and then de-centered, de-narrated, multiple narrative urban society, clearly abstract society, global, large, 60 to 70% of the population is supposed to be in these alpha cities, these sprawls, but where are we going to get food? Um, with the amount of petroleum. Production of space from Gregory again after Lefebvre. Um, abstract space, we live in concrete space. Um, this has all changed under COVID. Um, um, teaching UX, UI um, in this confusing, beautiful, ugly, clear. Where does the campus exist in this place? Where does a website? This is the bread and butter of what I do as a practicing in addition to teaching designer, um, I wanted to get to social space. And here's the important part, um, high risk, nightclub, um, indoor bar, seeing a concert, a play, indoor party, sports stadium, church on the right. In COVID times, um, we have low risk, um, spreading out the beach, library, museum, maybe. Um, uh, uh, and then we have the high risk. The high risk were off, spaces were often seen as the dividends, as certainly the place the young chose to diversify the gene pool, um, communed. Um, certainly we are a social animal where this happened, amusement park, uh, uh, hug, shaking, hands, seeing a concert, a play, indoor party. All these things, the church even, all these things, synagogue, mosque, all these things went away. So um, this is the structure of the now, um, where we're brought all the, the diet all the way up to the foundation of the city, the acceptance or the non-acceptance of the call to contract. In film noir, we saw a kind of non-acceptance or an articulation of a non-acceptance. And then where do we see the dividends going? The high risk dividends, the pleasures in life disappeared under the threat of um, contagion. See you next.